Hey everyone, this is my Patreon proud reaction to the 24th and final episode of Love Hina. Now I know there is some extra Love Hina stuff around, like some OVAs and specials and stuff like that, that I will probably eventually get around to, but as far as the Love Hina main series, this, this is the end of it, so this will be the conclusion. I guess we'll see what happens. Last episode we kind of had some bit of a relationship drama between Keitaro and Naru and Musumi, so yeah, I guess we'll see how this all pans out in this episode. Three, two, one, play. <sighs> I believe Kate, uh, Naru straight up kissed Kitaro last episode, so... I guess her days of being Cinderella are over. <laughs> you can't really say I don't like you or anything, Baka, after you kiss someone. It's a bit tricky. But you just love it when you go to grab something without looking and it's just barely slightly out of your reach so you have to look in it anyway and see where it is. And yeah, pretty much all the cards are on the table now. I think everyone knows that Mutsumi was the childhood friend, promise. <coughs> You know, Sue, that's probably not the best outfit for winter. I really am pretty happy to find out that Musumi and uh, Naru were childhood friends as well. That's pretty cool. That's one thing I definitely did not see coming, but it made the one spinning scene of the two of them in the opening make more sense. But... I bet you got a lot to think about now, don't you? Yeah. Things are not looking up for you right now. But it's nothing we can't turn around. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you'll walk in on a girl like this, <laughs> you know. I don't think she minds sharing the shower, though. She'll probably be okay with that. She's pretty cool like that. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. It's not a problem, you just share the shower. Speaking up for the two of you. Oh, this is what, this is probably what led to that scenario we saw before, isn't it? Now that I think about it. Yeah, that's what it was. And she jumped to conclusions and the misunderstanding and the sadness and the running away. And she dropped something, it looked like. A picture, yeah. Interesting title. Yeah, this is about where we left off. That would be her lips. It's called the kiss. I know I know it's probably new to you, but it is quite the experience, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> uh come back, Naru. We can make a three-way work, it's fine, don't worry. I mean, I'm sure Mutsumi will be okay with a three-way involving Naru. She has kissed Naru after all. That is definitely you. That would be the childhood friend promised location, and that would be the childhood friend promised girl. And then she gave it to Naru. <laughs> All the pieces coming together. Of course not. Because the promise she made to you.
<laughs> he was indeed that little boy. Yep. Yeah, it's more than okay. Well, yeah, not not every girl can win, so. Yeah, you're just gonna give that up for a girl that's abusive to you. I mean, you know what decision I would make as far as who I'd pick, obviously. <laughs> it's been a while since we had that parent drama. What about her? I mean, he already knows a lot of that, so... <laughs> he at least said bye. My love interest hung up on me. It was so rude. Uh. <laughs> Were they? I find that hard to believe. I, mean, I guess it's not that hard to say. I mean, you know, in Japanese, it's not hard to say. The transition would be a bit trickier. Obviously. <laughs> well, you were... And Matoko. Well, though they were Matoko, but it was Matoko scenes what I meant. Oh <laughs> well, yeah. It is a girl's dormitory after all. Apartments. Well, I could think of some suggestions if you want. <laughs> Whistling. No, she came back to help. Of course you did. Yes, that's exactly what you said. Oh, okay. I guess she has another invention helping out. A little Titan there. Oh, a mecha suit. Okay. I don't know. Hey, if it works, it works. Let's go with the strategy. See how it pans out. Bit of a damage to the road, though, but I guess it's fine. Knock, knock. Shinobu? No, Sue. I probably should have known that. <laughs> Where is Kentaro Robo? Is he a bit far behind or falling down? 
I was about to say, you got it, you got it pretty far. Yeah. She's also a lot nicer. A lot cooler. A lot funner. She's kind of better than Naruto in every way. But Naruto is a Sundere, and Sundere's usually win these sort of things, so... Because most standard protagonists are masochists, I guess. Which does explain a lot. Turtle lady. Her name is Mutsume. Well, I'm not sure what would help him get into Tokyo Yu at this point. He already had people tutoring him and stuff. <laughs> oh. You know that's not true. And sheath it, and then it'll fall to pieces. Yep. Oh wow, she does have quite the te technique, I guess. Did he do that? I guess he did. So there's no couches or anything in that room? <laughs> Wow, I love that voice that she was making there. I guess that's good to hear. Do you like Naruto's outfit there? I'm sure she will. Oh, Shinobu, she's found me. If only we could hear what they were saying. Are they wearing the same skirt? Well, I kind of would have liked to hear the previous part of that conversation, but okay. I guess that's the important bit. Oh, just you, Kitsune. Yeah, we don't need you staying outside at night by yourself. Probably not safe. Oh. Who's breaking stuff? Oh, of course, it's set of crashing into more stuff. The reason he's not dead yet. Wonder what his hospital bills are like. Oh. Gee. <laughs> I kind of forgot he was a master at martial arts. That's not a mismatch at all. <laughs> Seta, I'm sure you're referring to Seta here. Obviously, explain this because it relates to Naruto's situation. <laughs> Asking her to go against her Sundara ways. Yeah. Okay, you're just making a list of excuses at this point.
I mean, what it comes down to... If you like him, you confess to him and see how it goes from there. There's... None of that stuff really matters beyond that. Of course, I hope he chooses Mutsume, but still. You should at least tell him how you feel, if nothing else. I know that he's most likely going to end up with Naro anyway. I've accepted that. Looks to me too good for him anyway. Because that's his character, a pushover. Spineless wimp. Both. Please stop abusing my guy here. Yeah, stand here so we can beat you up some more. That would be the more reasonable thing to do, but... There's nothing wrong with choosing a path that's a bit more realistic for you. Especially if you failed multiple times. But there's also nothing wrong with trying over and over again, if you think you do have a chance. <laughs> ada ada indeed. The gang's all together. Yeah, he does that. It really confuses me when it has two sets of subs, one for the song, one for the dialogue. I'm not sure which is which. It could at least make them different colors, but... I know these are very old subs, so I don't even know how viable that would be. Rude. But hey, apparently Kaitara was there. I guess I should have known that's where he would go. That makes sense. E. I didn't think you would. Oh wow, I got kind of a blush out of her. Those old guys just really make the scene a bit weird. They just stand around watching. Well, they left now. I guess they must have heard me. Well, yeah, he's an adult. Sort of. That was kind of cute when she blushes, I'll admit. She just has a lot of personality problems. <laughs> you probably shouldn't run upstairs holding hands at night. That's kind of a bit of a hazard, safety hazard. Yeah, so I'd like to go back to the status quo, please. Dead to end off the series. Of course. So yeah, now he's definitely going to be the, the manager again. Don't worry, he's right there. and Apparently the sun rose at some point. Because now it's just blinding. Don't. I thought she was going to push him out the window. It wouldn't surprise me if she did. 
Sama. What? Of course she is. What are you saying? Okay, okay. Well, that was wrong. I actually got chills from her telling me that. So, apparently, yeah, I guess it is just an unknown girl. That always was the other possibility, but I was convinced it was Musume. Oh. <laughs> that's that's a wonderful position to be in. And of course on Q. <laughs> oh, I still love you, Mitsumi, nonetheless. Yo, Tama, what's up? I wonder if it ever is revealed who the girl is. Probably not. <laughs> it's never a dumb moment at the Hinata apartments. <laughs> or so we hope. Yeah. So that was the 24th and final episode of Love Hina. And this episode pretty much was a matter of, uh, the episode was basically getting Naru and Keitaru to come back to the Hinata apartments. That was basically what the episode was in a nutshell. And you had people running around trying to do this, Shinobu doing her best because she is very thankful to Keitaro for what he's done for her. And you had Kitsune kind of helping out with Naru, a big part of that is because she has similar circumstances but back in the day that she kind of sees a parallel with Naru, so she kind of wants to prevent her from making the similar mistake that she makes. So it doesn't want to just, you know, for, uh, give up on Keitaro just because Mutsumi's in the picture and all that. So that was basically the two biggest aspects of the episode. Of course, we had some sil silliness with Sue and uh, Kentaro in the robo suit, which wasn't that, didn't really amount to a whole lot, really. But, you know, he did have his words to share with Keitaro, which I'm sure had some influence as well. Oh, and we got to see the exact story behind that whole Mutsumi being on top of Keitaro in the hallway thing that Nara walked in on. It was because he wasn't expecting the bathrooms to be linked the way they were, and he kind of walked in on her in the shower. He panics because, of course, he does, and she kind of just falls on top of him, and that's just how that scene that happened. But yeah, basically, we more or less returned to the status quo with Keitaro and Naru coming back to the Hinata apartments. And we had a very big reveal at the end there, the fact that apparently Mutsubi is not actually the childhood promised girl, at least I'm pretty sure that's what she said, which is pretty shocking because I was pretty convinced that she was, so, but according to her, she's not, so I guess the mystery on that continues, so, yeah, we didn't really get a straight answer about who that was, but I guess I'll just kind of forever be a, a mystery, I guess it could have been any of them, really, maybe, maybe it was Haruka, I don't know, but basically that, that was base that was the leverage that Mutsumi really had, the advantage, I guess would be a better way to put it, over the other girls, and if that's not the case, then yeah, I guess Naruto goes back to being the the one with the best best chances with Keitaro. I, although I think that always was the case, but now it's a bit more blatant. So my thoughts on the anime as a whole. I mean, this has been a pretty enjoyable ride. A lot of fun characters like Sue and Shinobu and Otoko, even though she's kind of a man-hater, she's, I mean, she's she's cool enough as, as well. She's She has a katana, which is cool, being able to chop up things, use her super special awesome techniques and then sue who we found a lot of interesting backstory on about her being like royalty in another country or something and the whole family situation that she has to deal with and pretty much we got into basically all the all the hera members uh backstories and their own personal stuff like matoko with her sister issues, issues with her sister and her family and all that with like i said sue and her brother and sister and the f royal family and some obligations for that and she's just also very mechanically inclined. She likes to make robots and stuff. And Shinobu's family, I mean, that was pretty early on when she kind of had a, had her issues with her family and ended up going to the Hinata apartments because of that. Also, Naru eventually got her little sister, but we also had a lot of stuff with Naru, like Seta, her promise with him that was misunderstood, that Keitaro kind of misunderstood. 
And then of course other stuff is said to like the fact that Kitsune seemed to like him and then here's a blonde girl that likes him a lot that kind of is really mean to Keitaro. And Naru also wanted to go into Tokyo University as well, which contributed to the misunderstanding about the promise, because for a while you had Keitaro, who did believe Naru was his childhood friend promise, but it, it kind of revealed that it wasn't after a bit. And that was a big theme of the show, was that childhood friend Tokyo University promise. Keitaro keeps doing his best to get in there because he thinks his childhood friend love interest is also doing the same. Is probably already there, but that wasn't quite the case, so we'll... <laughs> For a while, it could seem Mutsumi was the childhood friend, and if which would have made a lot of sense because she has very similar circumstances to Keitaro, trying to get into Tokyo University, but mostly failing on it. And you know, we heard her talk about a promise or something, I think. And yeah, a lot of misunderstandings throughout the course of this anime, really. Of course, my biggest problem with the anime is just the fact that I hate that trope of a uh, harem anime, the Sundara character being, you know physically abusive for the protagonist for comedy's sake. I've never really been a big fan of that. I'd be, have a much less of a problem with it if it went both ways, if he did the same to her sometimes, but that's never the case here. He never hits any of the girls. In fact, Kate Taro is very much a pushover, spineless, you know, but usually the kind of, you know, the good-for-nothing protagonist that a lot of harem anime do have. Of course, he does do his best, you know, in certain respects, like trying to get into Tokyo University. The fact that he never gives up on that is something to admire about him, I suppose, even though his parents don't have faith in him. Nobody really has faith in him, but he's still trying because it's his dream, his goal. He had that promise, so that's like the only thing I really have any respect for him about, to be honest. I did really like Musume, like, a lot. You know, the one episode when she kisses both Naru and Keitaro, that was... That was pretty great. She was a really nice character. I liked her a lot. She was nice. She was silly. She was funny. I don't know. I just really liked that character. She is easily my favorite character in the show. I like Shinobu a lot as well, but Shinobu is a bit more, uh, I don't know, forgettable than Mutsumi. Mutsumi was definitely something special. She had her cute little Tama turtle, and she was ditzy but smart, and she just... I don't know. Mutsumi really was the most standout character in the show to me. I, I think I better remember her the most. Everybody else was kind of, you know... All right, they were usually very tropey, cliche, but Mutsumi was definitely, I think, the most standout character in the show. One thing I definitely want to mention before I end this off is that I do think I would have liked this show more if I had watched it, you know, when it came out back in, you know, the year 2000, because we're in the year 2018, a lot of the things in this show were probably less cliche back then than they are now, I would assume. So that would probably help a little bit. Because obviously the show has aged a bit. I remember some people even saying they wanted a remake of it. Like a My Endless thread on that. But I think that would be cool. But yeah, that, that a lot of my problems with the show probably does kind of stem from that. Some of the cliches that I had an issue with aren't really as common anymore. Anime has changed a lot since this period. You know, we've had the, the Moe revolution that we got since the K-On days and all that. But yeah, uh, but you know, for what it is, I definitely would say I enjoyed the anime. More, more than I didn't, I guess would be a good way to put it. And yeah, it was definitely, I definitely liked the opening theme. That was a very, very catchy opening. I liked that a lot. That was definitely the kind of thing that you really just feel excited and happy as you listen to it, like hyped up to watch the next episode. That was definitely something I liked a lot. And yeah, that's about all I had really, really had to say on this one. Like I said, I most likely will do the other Lafina stuff at some point. Just, I can't really give you a timeline or anything for that. Just kind of when I have some extra room for it, and I just kind of feel like squeezing something else in there. So yeah. Thank you for watching, and thank you Snokey, as well as everyone else, for doing what you can to support the channel. It means a lot to me, and I hope we can continue to grow the channel together. If you want to do more to support the channel, then you can become a patron on my Patreon, and get cool rewards like early access to certain videos. Have a good one.